Swati Krupp and welcome to Thailand News Today. Hi to Robert Meinhardt. Thank you for becoming a member. Don't forget we've got our app as well, which is free to download. It's on Apple and Android. I'm sure you'll find that a good experience. But for now, let's get started with today's main news stories. Whilst the daily COVID situation continues with its daily 1,000 or so new cases in Bangkok, new hotspots are emerging to the east and south. Chombri province, which also includes Pattaya City, has now had the last six days out of seven with over 100 new cases. Today, the WCSA reported 355 new infections in the province. Down south, the situation is also ramping up, and the closer to the Malaysian border, the worse the situation. The south of the country is now battling a new wave of the beta variant of COVID after a cluster was first discovered in a school in Yala. The infection numbers have now reached 402 people in just two weeks, with the daily reports on the increase at this time. The beta variant, originally known as the South African variant, gives health officials greater cause for concern as studies show it may be more resistant to vaccines. The rest of the southern provinces are also getting a rise in cases. Broadly, the further south, the greater the numbers at the moment. Officials are now engaged in active contact tracing and the school in question that had the original case has been closed. While Phuket's sandbox travel scheme is poised to reopen the island to foreign tourists on July the 1st, Airports of Thailand doesn't expect arrivals to really pick up at least until October. The Tourism Authority of Thailand is expecting 600,000 tourists to arrive between July and September, 500,000 of those domestic tourists. But the AOT president says the sandbox scheme might not attract as many tourists as officials expect adding that the island will be in its low season for tourism during the rainy months. Under the Phuket Sandbox Travel Program, tourists who are vaccinated against COVID and are travelling from countries classified by Thailand's public health department as low to medium risk can enter the island province. After 14 days, they'll be free to move around to other parts of Thailand. The AOT president says that whilst the AOT has prepared for the Phuket reopening, other businesses in the tourism sector are not as prepared. He singled out Thai Airways, which is still under the shadow of debt restructuring. He also said that many tourism businesses have closed down during the pandemic. He also noted that many of the major travel routes won't be serviced with regular flights in the initial stages of the sandbox. Yesterday, a mobile sterilisation and vaccination truck was used in Pattaya to treat dogs and cats. The program was held at the Krottinglai Temple and was led by Pattaya City Deputy Mayor. Manot says the project started two years ago with the goal of cutting down the number of strays in the seaside resort city. He said that the service is free and includes sterilisation, a rabies vaccine and medicine to present ticks and fleas. The city's mobile truck had three veterinarians and was fully booked with a quick and accurate service. Phuket Soy Dog Foundation has had mobile sterilisation services in the Southern Island for many years. Want to keep up to date with what's happening in Thailand? Download the Tiger app. It works on both Android and Apple. And it's free. All the latest news, videos and information at one click from your phone. Go to your Play Store or App Store and download now. The Royal Thai Army is adding another defence aircraft to its fleet. The government's ordered an additional Airbus C295 airlifter for an undisclosed amount. It will be the country's third C295 in its defence fleet. The tactical transport aircraft will be delivered to Thailand in 2023 the aircraft can be used for military missions ranging from cargo transport to medical evacuation and paratrooping deployment. According to a statement from Airbus, another military customer in the region recently ordered three of the aircraft. They didn't say who. A military source says that the purchase is under a budget approved before the COVID-19 pandemic 
Apparently under the orders of the then Army Chief General Apparat, the Thai Army was initially going to order the Gulfstream G5000 business jet. But the new Army Chief switched the order over to the military airlift airlifter aircraft. The ever-inventive Tourism Authority of Thailand is now looking at ways quarantine might be eased for tourists visiting Thailand, both on arrival here and on their return home. The TAT governor says city bubbles and activity-based travel arrangements in sandbox destinations could be the way forward. The arrangement would be between low-risk cities and would mean tourists could visit destinations considered safe in Thailand's sandbox program. Utasak has been busy thinking about who can be targeted in the TAT's latest scheme and has settled on those getting married and those trying to have a baby. He's proposing wedding bubbles and baby bubbles for foreign tourists getting married and then, well, perhaps seeking IVF treatment. The governor says the idea is to boost confidence in Thailand's safety, thereby persuading countries to relax quarantine requirements for tourists returning home from the kingdom. The need for quarantine on returning from Thailand is seen by many as a significant threat to the success of the forthcoming Sandbox initiative, which launches in eight days' time. In other news, TAT officials have signed an agreement with the Thai Chamber of Commerce to launch an initiative called Hug Thais to encourage domestic tourism and spending, including offering domestic tourists special deals to visit Phuket. The Deputy Commissioner of Bangkok's Metropolitan Police Bureau says the force is ready to handle pro-democracy rallies planned for this Thursday. Four groups are expected to stage rallies to commemorate a revolution carried out by the Kana Rat Sadon, which means the People's Party, back in 1932. The authorities are expecting rallies from four pro-democracy groups commemorating the 89th anniversary of the revolution which changed Thailand from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy. But the Deputy Commissioner of the MPB has issued a warning that Bangkok remains under an executive decree that bans mass gatherings during the pandemic. He adds that anyone who violates the decree could face prosecution, pointing out that daily new infections are still being reported in the capital. Meanwhile, police are meeting with city police to allocate staff for Thursday's rally and says officers will be deployed to guard significant landmarks in the capital. And news everyone in Phuket was hoping for, a bit of sanity returning, allowing restaurants to resume selling alcohol and certain venues to open under normal hours. The Phuket governor signed the provincial order allowing restrictions to be lifted in time for the sandbox travel model. Here's the list of things that can be reopened if your province is in a yellow zone. Schools and tutoring centres can open as normal. Shopping centres can stay open at their previously normal times. Restaurants can offer dine-in services until 11. Restaurants are now allowed to sell alcohol. Convenience stores and supermarkets go back to their old opening hours. Sports stadiums, fitness centres and gyms can open during usual hours. Salons and barbershops can open as usual. Gee, thank heavens for that. Billiards halls can open from 3pm to 11pm. Internet cafes can open as usual. Cinemas and water parks can open. People can now gather and drink alcohol at beaches and parks. Events with more than 200 people, though, are still prohibited. Just to remind you that those changes are for any yellow province. And a list of those provinces you'll find at thetiger.com. And in today's COVID figures, 4,059 new infections have been detected in the past 24 hours. 35,836 people are currently undergoing treatment for coronavirus around the country. Only 75 new cases were detected in Thai prisons today, a welcome drop in case numbers. Another 35 people have sadly died in the past 24 hours from COVID-related symptoms. 
Well, a lot of things happening around the kingdom. A lot of changes at the moment as we're gearing up for the opening of this sandbox, which really is the reopening of Thai tourism right around the country. So a very important event. Please subscribe to our channel. That would be much appreciated. Also, please join us on Good Morning Thailand every morning. It's live, yes, live at 9 a.m. Thai time. In the meantime, thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.